All right. Yeah, so it seems like we're all settled in now. So again, this is the four to eight watch. Go for zoom. Zooming in on this something. Black coral. Black coral. I was scared to say it. I wasn't sure. I mean, I'm not sure Why do you either. Think it's a black coral. Because it's black. <laughs> 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 it's got a black skeleton. Was my thought. Um, uh, but it doesn't. It looks more like a primnoid or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so this is a chrysogorchid. Oh. I knew it. Um, yeah. <laughs> a chrysogorchid, really? It okay. Can, yeah, so it does have a shiny luster, but it's obscured by uh, the tissue a little bit. This is Romulogorgia militaris. It's one of the most common corals we've seen on this dive so far. So I should know it by now, but I don't. <laughs> You'll see it. It's okay. Okay. There's, there's still time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, go ahead. Great. I thought that chrysogorgids were like, um, sort of like bottle brushy. Um, they are very diverse. So uh -huh. even the Iridogorgia, the, the spiral helical species, and the okay. Metallogorgia, they're all the same family. Okay. The Iridogorgia is a Chrysogorgid? Yeah. Okay. But a Chrysogorgid is not an Iridogorgid? Correct. Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a square, square is a rectangle, not a rectangle, but a rectangle yeah, is yeah, not yeah, a rectangle. Yeah, 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 obviously. <laughs> so the, um, the one that we just saw is a rhombus. I've already... Uh, I've already forgot the name of it. Militaris. Yep. It's a. It, it's one of the few planar chrysogorgids. It's not pl planar is not a common morphology, but um, it is present in a few different genera. Yeah. So we're starting to it's definitely pick up density. I would say, over the next uh, few hundred meters, I have a hypothesis that I'm trying to um, test. And that is, I as soon as we move about halfway up the slope between 6A, uh, between where our Go location now and 6A, I expect there to be potentially more en enhanced regular currents um, mm -hmm. getting over the top of the summit of the uh, seamount okay. topographic high to our northeast. And that might allow um, greater density of coral. So we're just see how how that happens uh, if it happens this vehicle's so bouncy right now don't know what's happening why are we so bouncy Steve yeah I don't have an exact number for you on how many meters the last watch moved uh, but I think it's about 690 yeah that's all right I think I think we'll we're, we're in really good shape um, to get to the end of the dive great yeah Six ninety in one watch. That's a lot. Yeah, that, that's that's pretty good. Um, we did four hundred and ninety-five this morning. Wow. But we were also on blue water. Also on blue, blue water. water. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. <laughs> so that was only two hours of watch. We did four four hundred ninety-five meters. Blue water seems so long ago. So what you're saying is that it's not a competition, but we did better. <laughs> <laughs> not my words. <laughs> But it is your sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Go for zoom. <laughs> well, we we can't we can't if we can't win the shrimp competition, maybe we'll win the meter count. Mm, true. <laughs> are we are we well, losing we, in the we shrimp department? We are department? winning actually the shrimp competition nice. because oh, these okay. are all my tallies. We're we're <laughs> just a four to eight is the superlatives. There's another one there. Look at us go. Yep. <laughs> Five, ten, fifty, twenty. I don't know. Ashley has written here that they saw 36 shrimp. What? Whoa. I don't know about all that. I don't see the tallies. I don't think that'll pass peer review. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, just go, scroll up in that window. Uh, Steve, the chat is concerned yeah, about no, you. They're saying this. between two watches a day and observing from the lounge, does Steve get any sleep? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's missing its little... Of course. I am legally required to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do sleep. So that's why you don't remember your dreams. Yeah, I just, I... No I sleep. Out and in. Like it's like... Full screen mode here. It's full, full, full reboot. These are your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, you you joke, but... Yeah. When I was doing my dissertation research and analyzing, you know, hours and hours of video, 
I would see corals when I closed my eyes. Oh no. Oh, I, yeah, I can see that. I don't know how it got into that like full screen mode. I think anyone who's like done a lot of really, really intensive, repetitive research uh, or data collection probably has similar stories. Yeah. I definitely dreamed ROVs like probably nine out of ten nights this cruise. Or you dream about eating basalts <laughs> when you're sleeping. I, what? <laughs> hmm? Nick well, has graduated from licking rocks to eating rocks. Yeah, yeah. sure has. I thought it, in my dream it was a fruit and it yeah. was delicious. <laughs> I, I have a, you know how when people defend their dissertations, people make themed cakes? I really think you oh. deserve a, a, a basalt uh, uh, cake. No, nugget, yeah, cake. A basalt nugget. <laughs> the real nice question and crusty. is, what flavor? Oh, looking at a shrimp chocolate, of course. Rocky Road? Oh. <laughs> Rocky Road. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rocky Road That's cake. actually a brilliant idea. It just has different layers of different flavors. Yeah. I think um, on the outside, definitely uh, Oreo cookie crumble is necessary. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Bacchari riddle. <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> nice shrimp. No I matter where I it. <laughs> I know on the OET website there's a, uh, in the educational resources, there's a activity where you can make bathymetry cupcakes. Oh, man. What? That's yeah. Awesome. They look amazing. Too bad I don't like baking, but maybe Bronwyn can try it <laughs> when she gets home. <laughs> you have to send me that uh, location yeah, I'll send on you, the I'll website. Yeah, I'll send you the link. It's yeah. definitely on OET's website OET somewhere. OET is a very expansive website. That's yeah. what I like to look on in blue water. We're what turning into the Nugget Slope again. The nodule Dragon. Slope. It's kind of the same kind of terrain we observed when we first yep. got on bottom. Um, yeah, the larger, larger nuggets, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. The potatoes. Pota yeah, potatoes, I would call them. Zero. Yep. Tater salts? Definitely. Uh, <laughs> but at zero point what? Taters. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yeah. We Actually, need let me to, do a little math. It's we need uh, to write a paper and just set the record straight. <laughs> you know. Let's see. Taters, nuggets, nodules. What other terminology have we used so barrels. far? Barrels. Tiny barrels. Tiny barrels. Tiny barrels. <laughs> Where did that one come from? I like from? that. Yeah. My brain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't heard that one yet. That's why I'm saying. That one's new to me. I've definitely said it. Maybe it was just for myself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Like root beer barrels. Like, like root beer, dirt, root beer dirt barrels. Root beer barrels. The root little beer barrels. Root beer barrels. Beer barrels. I heard marbles <laughs> earlier in the lounge. <laughs> marbles. We definitely got there marbles. eventually. Does marbles imply they have to be spherical, or is that something? I would, um, I would imagine yeah, so. Yeah. No, we definitely, uh, okay. Annabelle and I actually played a little Go marbles with them, so it is possible. Okay. okay. <laughs> Wait spherical. a minute, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Go for Zoom. You're cutting rocks, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's just a splotch on the rock, but there is uh, something on the right-hand side. I do see that. Polychaete oh. worm. Bridge, no? Go wide. I can tell what kind of watch this is going to be, Steve. I'm sorry. Add five zero the meters zooms are to not hazardous. No, that, that, that's all right. We we want to move a little bit. Um, they it's just, just snaps. They shouldn't in. be so bouncy. I will I will tell you if if we need. Yeah. Okay. To and then I'll, I'll set settle, up properly for that. Go settle. for zoom. Yeah. Free living polychaete worm, polynoid. Sweet. So have all of these corals been the Chrysogorgia, the silvery one? Yeah, yeah, they're all the same, Romila Gorgia. So Romila Gorgia, just a, until recently, a couple of years ago, used to be called uh, Pleurogorgia <laughs> militaris in a different family, the Pleurogorgia day, but then that group was revised and Romila Gorgia was transferred to the Chrysogorgia, Chrysogorgia Day. And I know you keep saying that this is the one we've been seeing, but is it like, how, how, have we been seeing a lot of those? The I, I feel the same way, Samantha. I feel like this is like well, that phenomenon where you think yeah, my question was like this dive specific, like in the last ten minutes, have they all been that? This dive has been co has they've been com more common, and I think we saw them were contouring across uh, 
from waypoint four to five more also. But um, I expect them to see more them more in this depth range. However, uh, we did see them on the previous dive as well when we were in the same depth range. Yeah, absolutely. What color is chartreuse? <laughs> Just like curious. light green? Yeah, I think. Like a greenish yellow? We'll Anybody green. else? We'll go with green. Uh, are we un are we unanimous on green? Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that doesn't get people anymore. Maybe it's overused. Yeah. In my heart of hearts, I still believe it to be magenta. What about Pius? honestly? I was quietly magenta. sitting in this corner thinking it's definitely purplish. Pius? <laughs> yeah, Pius is, I, Pius is like plum, isn't it? I was brown. sitting in this corner. What color is Pius? <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of this. It's definitely it's the like Mandela a effect. It's definitely uh, chartreuse is definitely green, but I grew up thinking it was magenta. Oh, you're right. Puce is definitely, yeah. <laughs> it's a okay. reddish brown. What did you think it was? Brown. Okay. Puce. Wow. This, this conversation is happening because Gabby and I both believe that we've not seen that coral. Gorgia, yeah. That All that frequently. Steve claims it's incredibly <laughs> frequent <laughs> during <laughs> this cruise. So we thought maybe it was the Mandela effect, and we were wondering if any of you have seen Sh Shazam in s the Mandela yeah, effect. with starring Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember that movie. Yeah, it doesn't exist. No, yes, it exactly. It absolutely doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Look it up. Then what didn't is happen. it? It's he the Mandela effect. Okay, excuse me. Sin or Mandela the, effect, Sin I should say. Sin yeah. Sin Sinbad, the movie doesn't exist. Sin, uh, no, uh, Shazam starring Sinbad doesn't oh. exist. Yeah, it Shazam does. was. Sh no, it doesn't <laughs> exist. Shazam is a is is something. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we're lost. <laughs> <laughs> Back up blue water, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. So anyway, this is all on Samantha and I. Let's get, <laughs> we can we can go back to science yeah. anytime. So Romula gorgia militaris <laughs> okay. is uh, a coral that uh, was described in 1908, uh, and it is called the species name is militaris because when the polyps are all dried out, they they stand in nice. Uh, neat linear rows uh, erect uh, and so the, the author remarked that it looked like soldiers lining up and this is the one that you claim everything we've been seeing is this species not everything but okay. it, it's, Many. it's one of the I most mean, common corals i mean not the things that aren't here. that species <laughs> Roger. okay i've yeah it's I've it's, it I, it's uh it's also on na149 it was adam's favorite coral too i i recall i have I feel like I've not seen that coral. This is very. It odd. was extremely abundant. <laughs> it was on Adam's watch. This is concerning. The collective. We didn't see. We didn't see it yeah. um, on the this morning's watch, though. I feel like there's a prim know it that a looks a little bit similar. That's like small and branching and silvery. Yeah, exactly. I think I just must have thought it was. Yeah. Different species. Huh. Well, here we are. Here we are. We just got here. We're <laughs> <laughs> in front row of Yeah, but we're like way, good. we're like three quarters of the way through the cruise. Yeah. So we didn't. So we just got here, but existentially, we did not. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time been coming. Here for years. <laughs> well, it's not how you start; it's how you finish, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delusional. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be positive here. <laughs> we have, he's saying we have a chance to turn this around. Oh. Wait, well, no, I didn't say that. I said it's how you finish. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they uh, saw a Dumbo octopus today, so what? Nick, so far you're winning the bet that we started <laughs> earlier this morning. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see if um, Logan, Logan bet that we were going to see two, so let's see if Logan's going get, to get the prize. Right, right. Can okay. we, uh, while we're going up the slope, if we have time, can we do a quick scan to the left and to the right, looking along the slope, just sure. to see if it's similar? Okay. Everything here looks really well cemented together. Yeah, it does. Actually, the view in Atalanta oh, with Herc's deep. lights is even better than anything you can get from Herc. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. As far as like just being able to tell what's going on at the scene. Cool. That's left. <laughs> so 
somebody on the chat says, speaking of rocks, if there is one thing I will remember from Nautilus for the rest of my life, it's poetry yodel. Wait, I know. I was expecting a different outcome for that yeah, one. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, curveball. <laughs> the night is young. Is it night? Uh, yeah. Somewhere. In my, in my opinion. In my, my <laughs> opinion. In my full opinion, it's nighttime now. It looks totally homogenous. Yeah. Okay, great. Wow. I guess we'll just keep yeah. going up. Well, they don't call it the control room slash sensory deprivation box for nothing. <laughs> Is that what they call it, that, though? Yeah, that's what they call it. It fits. Are those loose rocks? <gasps> Are we looking for a rock? How many, I don't know. I think we're always looking for rocks, aren't we? The one? Okay. It has been... 10,000 years <laughs> since our last <laughs> rock sample. Actually, I think it's been pretty recent. No, no, we have lots of rocks. 178 okay. meters. Okay. I'll never offer to sample a rock again. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's what part of his method. It's part of his chess game. He's playing with himself. <laughs> it's all part of the plan. 4D chess. <laughs> yeah. 4D. That was the last collection. Okay. You have really? eight rocks, Mitch. I don't know. Yeah. That, that, that well, unless right. yeah, I don't know. Maybe they wasn't recorded. Yeah. Uh, I, they because they just picked up a rock. Uh, at the, uh, just Brown, would you the have the chain. most recent sample number for a rock? Yeah, it it was 154. Oh. Okay. Mm. Seems extra snowy all of a sudden. Yeah, that's interesting because we are coming up and over a um, a saddle depth of a saddle like a sill to our east which wraps around the seamount and so I can pull it up on MB proc uh, if we want to put that on channel 3 if MB we proc time. yep yep two seconds Okay, thank you. So. All right, let's play name that coral. Gorgia. <laughs> All right. Nice. And an associate. Yeah, what is that? A yeah. business associate. <laughs> Little buddy. Go, go tighter if you Yeah, got that's it. all I got. Okay. okay. That's on me I then. I had, no, I thought I had a little more. It's all good. It's okay, I can't really hold this very well. Yeah, so I'll come back. It's all right. I have no idea why. Very nice. Okay, MB proc coming to SAT3. There you go. All right, so if you are on the quad and you can pull up uh, and look in the left, lower left-hand corner, um, we're taking a look at our dive track here. We are located right about oh. here where the cursor is. Um, and so I wanted to point out uh, two, a few things. The summit up here is where we're headed to via waypoint six ish. Um, but to the east of us, there's a small sill here uh, at around 24 50 meters. Um, Go for zoom. That might be restricting water flow uh, around the summit of the seamount. And I predict as we pass 24 50 meters here, about 50 meters left to go we might start seeing more things because the flow uh, characteristics will be different than what we've been diving in all day. 
Uh, this looks like an alternatopathy, so at least that's what we've been calling it consistently. We sampled one a few days okay. ago. Okay, A couple days ago. Last week. Last month. <laughs> now what is time on board? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All the above. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Going back to that dive plan, uh, Steve. Yeah. Uh, where that saddle <laughs> is that you were just pointing to, you can see these two other uh, conical kind of slumping uh, parts of the seamount that, that actually might have been raised up a little higher, but uh, some kind of seismic event could have maybe possibly uh, pulled it down a little bit. Yeah. So let's test that hypothesis. Let's see it around 24, <laughs> 50 meters if we start seeing a lot yeah. more stuff. And uh, I, I suggest it would get even better as we continue up towards the summit. And I think the, the ridge near waypoint 6-1 or 6-A, whatever we're calling it, oh. should be really neat because it's a uh, northwest, southeast trending uh -huh. um, little promontory ridge yeah. sticks out. Oh, perfect. There's a, can we zoom on that? Have you got a chance? It's a by chance, I can try. By chance. I get a snap zoom real quick. Yeah, so we've got an Aridogorgia species, possibly Magnus Boralis here, with two squat lobster associates. Not a frequent coral we've seen with coral associates, so we wanted to get a good image of that. But Do you need something more? Nope. Okay. I think uh, we'll keep an eye out for other colonies. They usually don't exist solo. They're pretty abundant at a site. But it's a good sign. We're starting to see some more diversity as well as we move shallower. Was that a type of firework coral? Yeah, Iridogorgia magnus paralis, yes. That's exciting to hear that you're expecting or hoping that we're going to see um, more diversity, more things as we get closer to the top. Yeah. It's a it's a hypothesis. Yep. You know, we try to know. test some hypotheses while we're out here. I love the shape of the summit of the seamount, though. It's nice and mm -hmm. conical. Yeah. And um, it's hit or miss whether there's you know the magical mystery place under the sea at the summit uh, that we hope to be there. But um, in some in some cases it has been incredible. Um, if you look at some of the cruise highlights from NA110 at in Jarvis. What is that? Oh, that's a piece of. Uh, oh, cool. There's a there's an aplacophoran at the base, also a little wormy thing. That's a shellless mollusk. Neat. They're coral predators. They pre oh. prey on polyps and tissue. Interesting. Vicious, vicious predators. <laughs> All right. Does it take them years to Do eat I? too? I don't think so. I think it might be faster. Poor little coral, it's about to get eaten up. Oh. But uh, they're often either two places, they're wrapped around, coiled around um, the, the stalk, uh, the axis of the coral, uh, or lying right at the base. And usually if they're lying right at the base, there's usually some tissue loss and exposed um, skeletal material at the base, which um, could be detrimental to the coral if it's uh, if it's undermining the coral, if it's, if it's dissolving some of the calcium carbonate over time. Uh, but everyone's got to eat, I guess. Yeah. Do you think that would eventually cause the coral to topple over because it would lose the integrity at the bottom? Or it's just cutting off that resource? Weird. No, I, I mean, I believe you. We'll learn. We'll learn more as we go. Yeah, no.
I still haven't given up hope that we're going to see a whale fall on the, <laughs> on the sea mount. Right on the tippy top. On the top. Yeah. It's going to hit its target. Go for zoom. Oh, yeah, oh. that's a little polychaete worm. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right. They're very difficult. Fast. It swimmer. is on its way. Yeah. There actually is a genus of uh, polychaete worms called swimmer. I would oh. love to see an acrobatic snail. Those are my faves. They're so much fun. It's so They're hypnotic. hard to film, but they're ridiculous. Wow. Is that bioluminescence I'm seeing? Or is that just the way that it's reflecting off of our lights? Uh, no, okay, it's prob there's C's probably like, a little bit of yep. uh, iridescence. Or, uh, yeah. All right, uh, thanks for the um, MB proc. You can turn it back over to whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Starting to get into larger pillow basalt, cohesive rocks. Yeah, Nick, why is it so lumpy over here? What happened? That is a very good question. Um, the shape is, off, is always defined by effusivity, which is basically a function of composition, temperature, and flow rate. So, uh, what... Science. Yes. Our esteemed uh, ROV pilot was curious if our uh, goal here was to move quickly up a slope or cruise or. This perhaps pacing is perfect if it's okay with you. Great. Are you interested in continuing to like pop up and look around as we head up the slope or just if there's an area of interest? Only if there's an inter interesting area. I mean, I don't. I think we could be poking around for rocks all day here, but if it's something really compelling. There's really nothing that looks loose. Okay. Um, it all looks very cohesive right now. If we happen to run across one of those talus debris fields, um, then we'll probably try to stop there. Is there loose stuff right in front of us right now? Uh, yeah, that, that little little pile might be loose, but... But not stop. exciting? Not exciting, yeah. Ground, yeah grounded. Yeah. Uh, so we, I think this is the one that we just saw probably. here, the black coral that we just saw yeah. maybe. Go for zoom. Yeah, another very small possible alternate pathies. Black coral. Okay, go in. So the Chrysogorgia that we've been seeing is not a type of black coral. No. Yeah, I, I unfortunately the, <laughs> the black skeleton kind of like only applies in some cases it's uh you know there are primnoids also that have dark uh, kind of exterior exterior layers to their skeleton it's not it's not so clear cut um but Apparently, despite that i think i know what it was despite <laughs> that it's actually one of the easier groups to tell apart um like the sclerocyanacea it's the other groups the Malacalosinacea that get really get messy. Everything looks like a yellow fan uh, for the paramerciates and plexorids. But um, 
some of our scientists ashore might be interested to hear that uh, there was an acanthogorgia that was collected a few dives ago. I believe it was on our shallowest dive, um, around 1,300 meters, and uh, I'm convinced it's a new species of acanthogorgia. It's something that I haven't seen anywhere uh, else. Very interesting uh, body wall sclerites. So. Happy to send some photos out if anyone's interested. Very cool. New species of Acanthagorgia? Possibly. Possibly. So Acanthagorgia is undergoing a revision right now by um, a PhD student at the University of Louisiana Lafayette um, and uh, eagerly awaiting uh, what the results of that turn out to be. It's a very complex group within the Paramariciidae. It used to belong to the, its own family called the Acanthagorgiidae. And uh, there's some really, really cool new works coming out that help, should help resolve some of the more complex relationships in that group. Mm. James Aubrey. Nice. What was it? Oh. What do you think made those dark designs or those dark squiggles on the rock there? It's a good question. I, I missed it. I wasn't looking at it at oh. the time. Sorry. Well, those are probably, they look like, like, yeah, like feeding traces. Yeah, it looked yeah. like bioturbation to me, but I didn't know if that was possible to show up on rocks or not. But I, I guess so. If there's like all this sediment on the rocks and if there's some good eating, you're going to leave some traces, um, like a trail. So. Yeah, it just looked really interesting. So again, if there's anybody watching online who is curious about anything that they're seeing, curious about anything that we do here on the ship, anything at all, or if you'd just like to leave any comments, feel free to do so. This is the 4 to 8 watch. I am Brittany, the uh, science communication fellow. We have Nick, the geologist, Steve, the watch leader, Bronwyn, the um, ocean science intern, data logger. Can we do a half zoom there? In the front row, we have the ROV pilots, Gabby and Karen, navigator, Samantha, and video engineer, Logan. All right, thanks. Just another Romila Gorgia colony with barnacles. All right. Looks oh. like we went into a pretty abru abrupt change into a... Uh, yeah. A sheet flow here. Seriously. No loose rocks here. I'd be very curious to look at the backscatter of this site to see if those nod, 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 nod nuggets. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry? <laughs> nod nuggets. The nuggules. Nuggules. I like that. Nuggules. Nuggules. Um, see if they have a distinctive. Uh, Reflectivity backscatter signature. This is the thing about scientific terminology. Unless somebody writes a paper about it, it will remain, you know, very subjective. Uh, that's why we have common names, for example, and uh, why it's important to develop a standardized taxonomy. Is there a? Is there a? a a standardization, a group that oversees standardization of minerals? Yeah, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but um, there was a problem back in the, I want to say 70s or 80s with uh, rock names. Uh, geologists were just naming uh, rocks more so than minerals. Um, just whatever um, the local formation, um, call, you know, they were, they were from a local formation. 
Uh, and these local formations were found to, to connect worldwide. Uh, so uh, international community of geologists came together to kind of uh, define rocks based off of uh, modal abundances of minerals um, or uh, chemical analyses of chemicals. Um, Steve? Specifically chemical analysis oh, for yeah, these really fine-grained... Uh, the Goni asteroid star. Volcanic rocks. What kind of star was that? The Goni asteroid. The Goni asteroid. Or one of the cookie stars. Oh. Mm. This one's not as um, spread out as the other one. Yeah, longer arms. Oh. Um, I can try and get a name on that. We've collected several goni asteroids, particularly from deeper than 2,500 meters this cruise. So we've been doing very good, very well. Um, Bridge now. Collecting representative specimens of these uh, sites. Five zero meters due north. Martino, so quick on the radio, I wasn't ready. <laughs> Somebody in the chat said something really interesting. So, yeah, you can categorize different types of rock, right? But then what about when it comes to soil? Are there different types of... There are different soil classifications. There's different horizons. Um, I, I'm, I'm not too familiar with uh, soil uh, classifications, but I know that they have like a, yep. uh, a top layer, A, B, uh, C layer um, going down uh, depending on... Uh, Biological activity and um, and uh, water saturation. Uh, there are different soil horizons that are defined. Are you talking about like loam and sand, and loamy sand? Yeah, I mean, well, that's that's a little bit different than what I'm talking about. But yeah, that's just a different way of classifying uh, grain sizes. Oh, well, not grain sizes, but uh, mixtures of of organic material and uh, any type of sediments. By grain sizes, do you mean like the uh, the pebbles conversation we had yesterday <laughs> or this morning? Pebbles uh, conglomerate? No, not conglomerates. It was... Uh, I thought there was a lot of talk about nuggets. Nuggets. Gravel. Not no. I don't think nuggets is a geological term. Was Nug it nuggules? nuggules? Cobble. <laughs> Cobble was one, yeah. Cobble. And yeah. it made me think of cobbler. Cobbler? Cobbler. Oh. Sounds, sounds delicious. We had turnovers there were, earlier. Yeah, there were little turnovers. I missed one of sad. <laughs> the pineapple oh, turnovers. Too. Yeah. Oh, we just had a. So okay, is this going from uh, low bait to pillow? Like or not pillow? Um, to like a sheet flow? Like what was that? Yeah, transition? I would say that we were just over a pretty pretty massive sheet flow. You know, kind of going back to pillow a little bit. Maybe a little bit of low bait flow. Mm -hmm. We have a viewer who's tuning in uh, with some um, Red Bull and a puzzle. It sounds like a great evening. <laughs> and they're nice. wondering how can a cute little sea star possibly withstand pressures of the deep down under? lots of animals down here including that sea star and yeah they're doing just fine so they have adaptations that allow them to uh, be able to withstand this pressure I think Samantha did we have a conversation yesterday about it's not so much the pressure difference that would be the problem if these um, animals came up closer to the surface but it would more be the change of temperature yeah temperature and just oh, knowing enough about them to is there something longer? that... A little bit. Yeah. Can we what is this? There? Appropriately. Yeah, you can see like little... Is that columnar? Oh, pieces columnar. Right there? columnar. It's so hard for me to say that word. So a quick NOAA answer says that Go they don't some. have a lot of gas-filled spaces like lungs or swim bladders, so they don't have air to be compressed in their bodies. Or is it more... Hello. Stop there. I would say that that is kind of trending towards a columnar basalt. Columnar basalt. Yeah. 
Uh oh. That Does is that what drew me to it for sure. Does yeah. that mean there's more around somewhere? Possibly. Should we look around? Oh. Go away. It's definitely got a, a very tall yeah. aspect to it. Oh, yeah, and it looks like some here. of this fell off over here. Oh. Go for zoom. Very cool. And I heard you, Bronwyn. Oh, Thank you so an much. An I can't oh, do yeah, it. What is that? An anemone. <laughs> Stop there. You do it. It's a cup coral. Uh, cup uh, coral. Fortunately, it's one I think we've already collected. Uh, this looks very similar to one we collected earlier in the cruise. And They're also similar to Yeah, okay. it might be Go a away. cup coral in the hose. Um, just to beware, like on our next slurp, we might see that. Oh, is maybe that that's just a sponge there. Yeah, is that an, that urchin we saw? Go for zoom. Stop there. Small glass sponge. Okay, go ahead. Unclear. Looks like an eyeball. Not a lot of characters to really tell. There it is again. Well, we're kind of <laughs> crossing. <Lord> we're crossing <laughs> that threshold, uh, 2450 meters. So maybe there's something to this. What's the threshold, Steve? Huh? What's the threshold? Uh, the the sill to our northeast oh, right. is 2450 meters. His hypothesis. Hypothesis-driven exploration. Oh, yes. New <laughs> new field. <laughs> yeah. Is That's it? how to do it. Or exploration-driven hypotheses. <laughs> Or maybe just a hypothesis. Who's driving this thing? <laughs> <laughs> that was more of a morning joke, I think. More than more of a what? Morning watch joke. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still bouncing? Hmm. Doesn't look like a lot of current. Doesn't look like a lot of current. A little bit. Were we still interested in a uh, a rock at any point here? Yes, but I don't think any of these are loose enough to grab. For me, not even the pebbles. You said rock. Mm, I'm good on the pebbles. We do, yeah. Pebbles. We do have like three separate pebbles. Okay. <laughs> three separate collections of pebbles. Is the I scoop mean. also in the Fora bio box with the uh, floaty organism? Mm, doesn't oh. look like the this scoop. This does look like a halfway decent field. Oh, yeah, the scoop's in the starboard box with yeah. more nodules. <laughs> ah, interesting. Just about to finish up the move, so maybe hold off on calling it another move while we con contemplate the rock. Okay. Yeah. Take all the time we need. We can land and grab something in this area, if that's okay. Those are some good-looking rocks, I think. Pardon me? Maybe you'll find some you colors. Enough, uh, I said those are good-looking rocks, gonna make I think. Leadway. I think you're right. Great. Ooh, is that a oh, oh, it's a fish. Cusk eel. Oh. Yep. Cusk eel. Non-cooperative. Uh, science, anything looking good here? Um, yeah. Uh, maybe that. Okay. I feel like this I is going to be I'm sure wherever you land, I can okay. spot something out. I feel like this is going to be another one of those places where I take a lot of sh porch samples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Going to do some sweeping again. Science, is there anything else we're wanting to do here other than a rock sample? Ooh, I've got my eye on one. Uh, I can't see anything right now, but Great. I'll let you know. Okay. That changed quickly too, huh? <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's a very fickle man. So it could potentially getting a, a little <laughs> bit steeper upslope given how much talus is here. Okay. Yeah. Would a columnar basalt have a distinctive interior color or distribution of minerals? I, I don't think so. I think the composition, um, 
of a rock is basically basalt at the end of the day. So I think it, you're just looking at different shape and different cooling history. Um, how about that rock? You ready? There? Ready, yeah. Bridge, huh? Looks good so far. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do another five zero meters. Do okay, right. cool. Is that within your reach? Uh, I think so. Okay. I'll give it a go. I can grab something else if, so, if it's not. It's a good uh. test if they're squishy or not. Mm -hmm. I can get you up there. Herc's That's bash. not a problem. Uh, just, <laughs> just barely out of my reach. Yeah. Okay, coming up. Okay. I think it's always worth moving. For the right rock. For the right rock. Anything. <laughs> Someone in the chat is wondering if the ROV pilots have better video gaming skills versus the non-pilots. Oh. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think that Karen that. must, but I don't have any video gaming skills. No <laughs> hesitation. That was great. This is the only ship I've been on. Well, we used to have one, didn't Where we? Where is this going? Can you uh, turn it first yeah, for yeah. me, please? But it is going to go in the starboard bio box on a small Lots side. Lots to choose from. In a small one. Uh, do you have a preference? Yes, but well, let me just make sure I get this picture as well. Sorry, I can't hear you. Karen, can you hear her? Uh, I'm just I'm just getting the pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry about that. In the A, the forward one. Okay. All the way forward. Roger. All the way forward, Roger. Happy? What is going in the box? In e? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> Actually, what is in E? That's really interesting. Whatever's sitting there. Uh, e has the scoop and a whalebone and another rock. Wow. A whalebone? Okay. A whalebone? Oh, whalebone. Fossilized. Ah, fossilized. fossilized. What? I didn't mention that. <gasps> Brown on what number is this? Fossils, oh, huh? I think, did it did it drop? I think it did. Okay. That's okay. No, it didn't. I'm sorry. It didn't? Okay. <laughs> it was just the, at a, a funny angle. This is one fifty five. One thirty five? One five five. One five five rudder. Thank you. Uh -huh. When did they find the whale bone? Fossil. Uh, that whale? was uh, two samples ago. Two samples ago. Oh, Try out on the run. Well, wasn't there like there's a, a crinoid on the run? Oh. Bottom right of the frame. Oh. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. I remember hearing a debate like whether or not they're actually fossils or not? Like, or, or are they just encrusted bone? Okay. No, craft valve is off. I guess off. we'll find out. Great, thank you. I guess we'll have to see when it comes up. I know. I'll wait with bated breath. I'm, I'm coming up pretty fast here. Okay. Coming up. Well, maybe some columnar. Getting close. Oh, wow. Oh, does a columnar result? Yeah. A little bit. Oh. Yep. Sure is. There it goes. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do we want to do we look around here anymore? Uh, should I have the ship? I've got to get it. Yep. Oh, yeah. If you want to hold the ship, that's yep. fine. Bridge now. Hold position. That was cool. Okay, so that two sightings cool. now. Did any of the other watches have uh, any columnar basalt? Uh, not that I know. Wow. Okay. So, why are we interested in columnar basalt, Nick? Because sure. it's awesome. It looks yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's really fun to look at. Well, why is it awesome? <laughs> Not a very good answer. <laughs> Give us wow. a science. <laughs> Scientist, go for Zoom. On the shrimp? <laughs> All on the shrimp. Why not? Stop there. It's cool. Yeah. So this is a uh, swimming shrimp, Panea shrimp. We see them quite often. Pretty common. They're just really fun to watch swim. Yep. Is okay, go on. Very synchronized. I know, I know. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. I gotta get the zoom styled. If they get them dialed, I can look at way more of the columnar corals basalt. and columnar basalts. <laughs> okay. And that felt a little better. Yeah, I'm still wondering, still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> columnar basalt. Are we just interested because it looks cool? I mean, whenever you see something unique on the seafloor, you want to take a look at it and observe it. Um, as far as sampling, it's not going to tell us anything different, um, but it has a really interesting cooling in history. Uh, I don't think we've seen that sponge at all this dive. Can we refresh on the really interesting columnar basalt history? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think Go I've heard this zoom. explanation. <laughs> what kind of sponge is this? Nice sponge. That's a nice sponge. What's going on yeah. there? Okay, nice go wide. Nice backdrop. Good goblet. Backdrop, too. Karen, the chat wants to know more about your Mario Kart skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, specific. yeah. My Mario Kart skills. I mean, I am pretty lethal with a banana peel. Wow. <laughs> Just Not a transferable <laughs> skill to ROV. <RV>, <laughs> I don't know. I've still with a group that does a lot of Mario Kart in between dives, and I would say it's very transferable to the time between dives. That's fair. <laughs> okay, I did the Googling myself. It um, has <laughs> hexagonal, six-sided, such as columns, and may have anywhere from 3 to 12 sides. And that's basically why it looks cool. Wait, they're, hexag they're hexagonal, but they can have 3 to 12 sides? Well, although usually hexagonal, they can yeah, have more, more up to 12. Oh, okay. Sounds They're like not uniform. basalts are worse than corals to try okay. and <laughs> yeah. down. I'm happy with the amount nostalgia. we've gotten. Can't ahead. keep up. Very hard to find. Oh, keep yeah. Moving. Great. Bridge, now. Yeah, some, some corals. Uh, five like zero meters north. Between four and 32 <laughs> polyps per inch or something like that. Huh. Simple as that. Yeah, simple. <laughs> Between four and 32. Yeah, they get those shapes from their uh, quick cooling where I, they, they just quench along certain boundaries uh, as they're being uplifted at the same time um, between the state of being gabbro and basalt. So it's, a, it's, it's uplift mixed with contraction and you get these really nice uh, column-like pipes. So for a second there, Nick, I thought you were still Steve, and I thought you were talking about coral. And it was like, <laughs> quick cooling gives the coral its shape, but you two are starting to sound the same to me. When we have a second, can we do another scan left and right yeah. along the slope? Okay. Just to make sure we're having a sanity check here, and it's all pretty consistent across, we're not missing some big ridge or something. I mean, sanity check is a little... <laughs> A little loose right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a relative term. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool to see those zoomed out views, though, where you can see each layer of, of lava flow cool, and then another one come up over it and cool again. Oh, yeah. That's neat. That'll happen on a really uh, much quicker uh, Time interval. Our uh, view.
viewers online want to know more about that whale bone that was found, um, or the whale fossil, um, they want to know if they can ID what kind of whale it is from. So my guess is it's probably from a beaked whale. Yeah, that's our best guess, and, and we've said that specialists at the Museum of Comparative Zoology where they have a uh, uh, mammals collection for further examination. But we, you know, it's it's really unclear. You know, they're completely coated by crust, and we would normally call a coral, for example, that was completely coated by crust, a uh, fossil or a pre-fossil, um, you know, loosely. We use that term pretty loosely. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it's unclear until you chip away at that what's actually in there and how how much of it is useful for different types of assays. The word pre-fossil. Feels it's a little bit like sub aerial. Sub -aerial. <laughs> yeah, I was getting that vibe too. <laughs> well, Steve's not wrong. I mean, a fossil is something that's typically buried and then, you know, Remi cast yeah. in a rock or eventually or, or minerals are preserved place, right? over thousands of years. Um, I doubt we're at that point yet, but, um, you know, first you need to be covered in something that will reduce oxidation uh, so you don't have any degradation over time. And upon burial, then it will become a fossil. Isn't a pre-fossil just the organism itself? <laughs> like you're a pre-fossil? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all pre-fossils. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Zoom. Don't sell yourself this short. Is? <laughs> right, this is just no. Bermuda Gorgia Hill here. Okay, so... <laughs> is it just the polyps being in or out? Is that kind of yeah, so the thing? This is actually a good example. I think... I think the polyps, or at least the tentacles, might be retracted here, so the polyps are look more bare, but they are still, still the same coral. Now that I'm seeing okay, it again, maybe on. that's what was throwing me off, because that one looked so crazy because it had the polyps like fully out. It looked totally different to me, even though I know it's the same. Yeah, I'm with you, Logan. Yep, still don't believe we've been seeing that one so much. <laughs> <laughs> <It's too crazy. laughs> Skeptical right, Samantha. You trust me. I, I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> when have I steered you wrong? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what about this 4D chess game that you're playing? 4D chess. It sounds really diabolical. <laughs> Go for Zoom. Is it already dinner? Wow, it is. Wow. Red sponge stock. Okay, go ahead. Pre fossilized, one might say. <laughs> Pre fossilized. Pre -fossilized. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pre fossilized. We've got a new one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That's good though. We were getting I, I, I didn't think, I, di I didn't start that one. I think, uh, I think Nav uh, brought the discussion on with that one. Wow. <laughs> I believe it yeah, started as formerly known as. <laughs> yeah, sponge. Okay, that I really do like. Sponge. Formerly known as sponge. Nick, can you tell us about how old these uh, sheet flows are in your estimation? Mm, I I would just I have to guess based off of uh, the ages of seamounts in, in the proximity. And, you know, they have a, a wide range. Some are uh, in the range of 70 million years, so uh, late Cretaceous, and others go back to over 100 million years. So. Um, Identifying this particular seamount, we will have to sample it first and run some tests before we can make any uh, any wise judgments or hypotheses. <laughs> but what about unwise judgments and hypotheses? You can do those anytime, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what we do on <laughs> a daily anywhere basis. Anywhere between 70 and 100 million, you yeah. know. Large, large range of air. Yep. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Going north, due north. 15 meters left on the move. But I've just been putting them in. It's K O V T time. Michael's here. That is, that is a true statement. Yeah. All right. So for our viewers online, it's uh, dinner time here on the ship. So we're going to be switching out for about half an hour or so as we go get our meal.
Um, see you soon. Bridge now. You can add another five zero meters north. Oh, you're on mute. Oh. It's okay, I don't think there's anything anyway. <laughs> Didn't want to go there anyway. I'd love to see a thing or some stuff. <laughs> Just one. Thing, things or stuff are cool. Would you like to see a coral? Oh, there's a thing. Shrimp, add that to the 12 to 4 watch count. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, how do we determine that? Yeah, that's a good point. Is it the pilots? Is it the I, I think, uh, quorum? Oh, I think I we're know. outnumbered. Watch, watch lead 4 to 8 is still in control. Yeah, we're outnumbered, Steve. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I sense uh, some disagreement with that. <laughs> but are you ever really no. in control? <laughs> control for that? We'll see. All right, time to ascend. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> well, well. Who's controlling the winch? <laughs> you guys have seen some pretty cool rocks, like that uh, split up thing that we you passed over a few minutes ago, Steve. Uh, they mean the columnar results. The what? The columnar results. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Can we zoom in there, Panos? What is this thing? Hey. All right. There's something new. Finally. Finally. Bamboo Bamboo coral. Coral. There it goes. <laughs> that's all we get. <laughs> that's the uh, first new coral we've seen in. Uh, oh, that's why. Okay, let's turn that meters. down. Let's turn this down. <laughs> This slope is pretty much we zoom out, please. from Eula Gorgia plus uh, black plus corals, right? Abyssopathy or uh, uh, alternate apathies colonies. Mm. I did see a uh, Corbitellinae. Start, start to uh, zoom uh, in there, please. She's kind of a saddle right around where we picked up our last rock sponge. Can you turn on the downlights? Not the easiest substrate of for background. No, unfortunately, yeah. it's a challenge. Yep. We're gonna have to stick with uh, Corrado Isididae unbranched for this one. Although it looks similar to something we've collected before. If if it did have a chance to retract its tentacles and polyps, um, it might be easier to discern. But I think we're gonna have to leave it at that. Trying to get closer. I really thought before I met you, Steve, that it was Kara twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah. Corrado I said a day. It used to be the family I said a day, and then it was. Right. Okay, can we uh, come wide, please? Revised no, a couple yeah. years ago, or last year, actually. When is it going to become four times a day? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you guys doing okay back there? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> All right. No, on that? <laughs> no laughing, crying yet. <laughs> okay. Well, there's like a something floating underneath it. Is that under the rock? I'm flying above you. Roger that. You're okay. All right. 60 feet above me. Come wide, please.
question in the chat, how much sand, uh, why is there not much sand on top of these rocks and how long does it take to accumulate? I think we talked about this a little bit earlier during the 12 to 4 watch. James, you had an answer for that one, right? I did. Do you still? <laughs> um, I, I'm not 100% sure about this area of the ocean, the CCZ, which is, um, it's a very large expanse of ocean, but it's uh, just east of here. Um, the rate of sedimentation is about a centimeter, or an, sorry, an inch per thousand years. Wow. Um, this is also very steep, so you know, I would assume that a lot of the current, uh, the the current kind of comes down the slope. So the sediment, I don't know if it actually has a chance to really touch bottom. I think most of it gets carried down to the bottom of the slope with the current, but I'm really just making stuff up. So. <laughs> This is a pretty thing. Coral? Vermula gorgia, yep. Most is a common, is that a black abundant behind it. Abundant coral? Uh, golden coral we've seen on this slope. So without any geologists present, is it right that we are kind of judging the quote unquote freshness of the rocks by how much sediment is accumulated on top of them in some cases? Well, you know, I, I am a bit of an amateur geologist oh. myself. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please enlighten us. Was that prior to this expedition? I, I feel, uh, I I'm feel somewhat of a scientist myself. By, uh, by my colleague here. It's like an honorary <laughs> degree for yeah. geology? Yeah. Uh, so th this is pretty heavily encrusted um, yeah. stuff. Can we come wide, please? A lot of iron cool. manganese crust, but we would go. still characterize this as oh. pillow, oh. pillow oh. basalt, so pillow lavas. Yeah, we got to get going. Atlanta is passing us, so. Zip on ahead. A lot of sponge rubble there. And uh, an Aridogorgia colony. Yep, right here. Yeah, I want to zoom in on that. Because we, we don't have much time here, unfortunately. All right, yeah, we're quick zoom. That's the first we've seen of this one as well on this slope, correct? Yeah. Uh, second color. First that I second, remember. Second, excuse me. But this actually might be a different species. Uh, is this the Bella? It could be. Uh, it's, it's a little tough to tell. Uh, squat lobster in it? Yeah. It we could just wide, be a small please. Magnus Borellus, too. It doesn't look as full as some of the other ones we've seen. The sponge graveyard. Have we seen spun, uh, squat lobsters on the Aridogorgias? Uh, they do exist there, but this is the first dive that I've really seen them uh, commonly associated with that. I suspect we'll see some more uh, up top. This seems like it's picking up uh, in biological abundance and density and diversity. And we'll most likely be entering the depth range where we most commonly might encounter them. Certainly a lot of sponge rubble. <laughs> it's a good shot of an Atalanta. Yeah. Like that. Really thick, slow, um, thick uh, sheet flow, lava flow. Bridge now. Can we have three zero meters north, please? Thank you. The question in the chat is that the shrimp that we've observed seem to travel alone. Do they travel um, in schools or together anywhere else? Uh, no. Always by themselves? Yep. As we start to come over and round the top of this little oh, bridge that sticks out at that? Uh, below waypoint 6A, we want to slow down a little bit because we suspect we'll see a lot more stuff, so we don't want to blow right through the this uh, this ridge here, okay. and I imagine it'll get maybe a little bit steeper too. Sounds good.
You can zoom in, Anos. Try to keep it in frame. Yes, uh, that's perfect. Nice colophacus. Glass sponge. Can we turn down the uh, turn on the down lights, please? Thank you. Oh, there's something on top, actually. Mm. Is that on the, on the top stock? Or is it, it, it might be the stock, or it might be some associate on top. Oh, yeah. Here, let's see if we can get around. All right. It looks like the stock. Keep going. There we go. Interesting. Huh. It's got bad posture. Mm. Mm. back sponge. Okay. Can we come wide, please? So many things. It's not the direction we want to go, though. Another large urticorgia. Yep. Is that a sea star down below on yeah, the slope like on the right? I was trying to figure that out. I think it might be uh, one of the jumpers, uh, the brittle stars that jump. Ah. It's moving very quickly for a sea star. You can zoom in. Did it jump off the coral, you think? Yeah, they do that. Looks like it's missing an arm or two. We've been, yeah, we've even seen them, uh, if we sit down in front of the coral, for example, we've seen them over time, if they jump off, they can actually start to climb right back up again. It was very Wow, strange. this opioid has had a bad time with something. Bridge now. Yeah, well, missing at least one arm. Maybe we're growing a couple others. Yeah. Can we hold position, please? Whatever it was, cost them an arm or a leg. <laughs> or both. <laughs> or both. maybe they're curled up underneath. No. Oh. No. Oh. No. Help. Help. Oh, that's a long way down. Oh, not that far. Andre, there's something here. I don't know if it's a item. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's one of those urchins we collected the other day. Uh, Habrosideris. Probably get moving. You can zoom in on that if you like. Oh, Here we go. Elpheocanthid. Brittle star. Oh, my back. We can get that little thing in. There we go. Yeah, and that's the, this is the Habrosideris that we collected a few days ago. Looks tiny here. Yeah. Just, just l small enough to fit down the slurp hose, we found out. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, did you just say that was an urchin? Yes. Yep. We need to start moving on. Habrosideris. Can we come A P H R O. Habro. Habro. Thank you. Yeah. The chat says the brittle stars are so dramatic. Mm. <laughs> Oh, Nobody home on that uh, Ritogorgia colony. It was barren, no associates.
unoccupy. We need to find a better terminology. Unoccupy. I might need you to spell that uh, name of that organism for me. That eight. Ritagordia? No, the Habro. Oh, oh yeah, I'll write it in the chat. Thank you. Oh yeah, it's there. Is oh, is that a Chrysogorgia? Is it bottle brush? Coral, yep. We don't have a lot of time here. It's okay. We, we, we will probably see some more. Um, it's good to know we are actually seeing more diversity overall. You can zoom in, Panos. Uh, Zoom out. Seems like each seamount we've been to, that there's been a different species that's more predominant for the corals and for the sponges. In certain, you know, so we haven't really seen an area that's predominantly Ramulagorgia, have we? No, it was it was present uh, probably in the greatest numbers on the just just previous dive we did, um, but no, we haven't seen it like this and I suspect that there might be some sort of filtering effect uh, perhaps we find those species on other parts of this seamount but just not here so um, we saw there was one seamount that had quite a lot of paramariceids right and then one that had a lot of ritagorgia yep depth has a, a big uh, factor depth is a big factor with uh, what you find so the paramariceids are largely controlled by depth, so we kind of expect to see them shallower. Um, but all things being the same, uh, at this depth we should be seeing a lot more things, especially precious corals. We're kind of in the prime depth for precious corals, 2,400 to 1,800 meters. Same for bamboos. We haven't seen too many large bamboos, but I've been noticing that currents have been pretty sluggish uh, on this side of the slope uh, since we've come up from the, the nodule nugget beds below. But there has been a steady increase in the numbers of corals, for sure. Um, somebody in the chat wants to know, do we ever find tardigrades in the samples we bring up? We don't look, uh, mostly because we don't really have uh, microscopes that would permit us to see those details, but you know, anything we preserve will there, stay perhaps. on there and it can be examined for such a things uh, at the museum, for example. Pleura, glass sponge. Not something I would say oh. is common at this site. I think uh, this might be the first of this watch. It's a great zoom. Oh my god. Jesus, you scared me. Frig. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry we went a little haywire there. <laughs> I need new shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting back from our dinner, so we're switching back out again. Is that the uh, hoagie in the background? Looks like there's an old Subway sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Roast yeah, beef. That's what it must Roast be. Beef. Roast beef yeah. and moldy bread. Yeah, obviously. Okay, can we, uh, sorry, can we zoom out, please? <laughs> On that note, somebody is asking if we ever come across trash or man-made objects. I don't know if that question has already been answered. We do, and I think we've seen maybe a couple instances that I've seen, but it has been remarkably uh, sparse. But that said, all you have to do is do a dive at Johnson Atoll, and you'll see hundreds of pieces of 
debris that have been dumped offshore over the years. Yeah. Yeah, so we are exploring the Johnson Atoll region, um, but we are still quite a ways away from Johnson Atoll proper. I believe that we're about 100 miles away. Oh yeah, go for it. Thanks. Oh, look at this. Oh. Go for zoom. Fly trap. Stop there. Yep, fly trap anemone. Current seems to be just based on you can push how this marine snow is moving, seems to be picking up a little bit. It's on an old sponge stock. So would it be safe to assume if an area has a lot of marine snow that it's going to have more uh, productivity? Yes. Great. Generally, that's that's true. Okay, and if you ahead. if if you're with us, if you watched us in the past, or if you will watch us when we dive at sites maybe closer to the equator, uh, you'll notice that out here there is generally really little productivity. But as you move towards the equator, you get equatorial driven upwelling, which fuels surface productivity and actually creates really intense uh, marine snowstorms. I'm going to um, be heading up slope a little bit. And okay. Export to the benthos. And can you take a zero, zero, zero heading? Yep. And so uh, when you get to the seafloor, you definitely notice a lot of differences in density and, and sometimes diversity of organisms. Yep. Bridge now. Especially in the water column, too, you see a lot more uh, animals like Pelagothuria, the pelagic sea cucumber. North, please? Thank you. Go for zoom. You can push in more. Cup coral. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cup coral. And then, oh, cup coral. Okay. Yep. This looks good. like the one we just saw a few minutes ago. That yeah, yeah, I said totally. we uh, we had okay. sampled. Go it wide. looks remarkably similar to something like Vanilla, uh, which I believe is a caryophyllid. But of course, with the those cup corals, like we collected one a bit earlier, it's really important to do some ground truthing now and again, uh, because they do represent a not insignificant uh, amount of biodiversity, Go for and it's practically impossible to identify them to species on the seafloor. But we generally have pretty good records of them, and we know what's new and what's not. Stop there. In the case of cup corals, a couple of them have been new Go records ahead. from this expedition so far for Johnson Atoll. So that's kind of neat.
go for zoom. So we're looking at some broken sheet flows here, some sponge rubble. We're seeing a lot more of it. Um, I hope this means that there's a, something interesting and good coming up at the top of the seamount or as we get closer to 6A. Um, usually these sponges grow where there's higher current flows. Oh, look at this. Yeah, Another that's one. what, yep. Swimming polychaete worm. Okay, go ahead. Is this a sea star here, or is, what's this white splotch? Go for zoom. Oh, they're just switching up. Okay, that's good. I still can't tell. Yeah, it is a sea star. It looks remarkably similar to the um, zoom species we, further? we had called Sarah Master yesterday. Our genus Sarah Master, and it looks doesn't it look like the one we sampled yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a type of short cookie. stubby arms. Yeah. Ravioli star. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a ravioli. I know. I I want to <laughs> dub it the ravioli star for sure. Okay, go ahead. It's important to note that uh, a lot of our knowledge of biodiversity of sea stars is actually not based on observations on the seafloor. It's based on collections, and anytime we can see these animals on the seafloor doing their thing tells, up, tells us something about how they feed, for example, where they're found, any behaviors that they might be in. This one, for example, is not predatory or not likely to be pred predatory. It's probably uh, feeding on Focusing. the biofilms and, and marine debris, marine mm -hmm. snow that you find uh, on the rocky surfaces. <laughs> When you say known from collections, do you mean like trawl net collections? Exactly. Where they weren't seen in situ? Yep. Okay, go ahead. These polychaete worms are giving me life today. I love They're pretty cool. They're so huh? groovy. Just <laughs> very hypnotic way of moving, too. Um, okay, uh, video, you can push in past oh, the vignette. Yep, yep. Thank you. Yeah, somebody's wondering how far apart are those lasers? Bridge, no? They are 10 centimeters apart. Uh, five zero meters due north. And those lasers are uh, coming from the ROV Hercules. On these dives, we use two ROVs. We use Atalanta, excuse me, Atalanta as well as Hercules. Hercules is the main one. Um, so if you're watching Channel One, that is the video feed that is coming from Hercules. And then if you take a look at Channel Two, you can see Go the view from Atalanta, which oh, is up about there. 30 min 30 meters above Hercules. Oh, it's a small uh, Riddick orchard colony. Can we get any closer to that? Do we have any time? Yeah. It's got a squat in it. Closer still? Uh, if you got time. Okay, go wide. Uh, okay, cool. Seeing a lot more Ritagorgia colonies throughout this area. And you're interested in the association here, right? Yeah, yeah, we're just trying to find as much detail as we can. When we get up top here, we may contemplate a collection. I don't think it'll disappear between now and waypoint 6A, but we have some time. Go for zoom. You can get right in there. Great, that's, that's really useful.
got what you need? Great. Okay, let's go grab and we're ready to go. Okay, go away. Black coral, right? Mm. So this is what we were calling Heteropathies pacifica, and uh, we've collected some of this. Stop there. One of the more common species. It, it might not be pacifica, but Heteropathies still. I think we have a piece of that. Good to note it. We're starting to see a lot more diversity as we're coming up over the top of okay, go this, uh, this knoll here. So we're going to take it slow. Sorry, uh, you want to slow things down? Uh, no, I, I was just saying we d uh, we're doing a handoff back here. Um, so I'm going off for a second. Okay. Keep doing what you're doing. So someone in the chat is wondering if we have ever used drones to help us with mapping. Has that ever been the case? Uh, we haven't used drones from this uh, vessel for mapping, um, for general mapping. Um, we have used it for specific projects, um, like looking for Amelia Earhart's plane um, at Nicomura Island, um, but we were working with, with partners for that one. Go for Zoom. Um, but there are certainly uh, mapping Stop applications there. via drone that um, that do exist. We, are, I mean, if you want to get really specific, you could also say that some of the surface uh, autonomous surface vehicles that are um, capable of seafloor mapping could be considered a drone. But okay, go on. Surface drone. It is a cool um, modality to use, like in conjunction with ROVs. So you would go to a site that you didn't know that much about, and first you'd put the AV down and map the site. Uh, and then once you have a good map, you bring the AUV back on board, charge the batteries, put the ROV down, and you can plan these very specific dives um, with much higher resolution maps. That can be super helpful. Nice. And do, uh, does the Nautilus ever use AUVs? Uh, we, yeah, we have. So um, typically our, our Nautilus expeditions um, include either ROVs, like Hercules and Argus, or at Atlanta, um, seafloor cool mapping, journey. or we work with partners who bring out um, their vehicles. Um, could be ROVs, it could be hybrid ROVs that are autonomous and um, tethered, depending on um, operations. And then, um, yeah, uh, service vessels as well, service vehicles as well. Um, on the Nautilus I website, you can see some of those partner okay, vehicles cool. under um, the tech page. Um, there have been a few, there will be, by the end of this year, a few out. Um, the University of New Hampshire's Drix, which is an autonomous um, surface vehicle that um, can do shallow water sea floor mapping. Um, there's the Mesobot, which is a Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution um, vehicle that uh, travels in the water column um, following the vertical migration that happens every Whoa. night as the sun goes down and, and we'll start to migrate to the surface. Um, what all other vehicles are coming out this year? There's a, a seafloor lander coming out from the University of Rhode Island um, with instrumentation on it, setting um, a variety of oceanographic conditions. I think that's it for partner vehicles for this year, but we've had um, many, many over, over the years and you can see those on the Nautilus Live website. Yeah, that's a lot. And it just expands the capability of the ship to... Um, so a, a lot of that testing that we're doing with multiple vehicles is that we can um, test modes of operations where we have um, the ship doing one activity and then the autonomous vehicle doing another activity. So um, over the years we've tested, say, the autonomous surface vehicle Drix um, mapping semi-autonomously on its own and then Nautilus actually the ship moving and doing uh, seafloor mapping as well. So two two vehicles, one doing deep water mapping, one doing 
Have um, we seen the Paragorgia yet this trip? Um, this yeah, I was about to ask, have we seen any pink fans, Hemichorellium or Paragorgia yet on the, on the watch? No? I don't think, not on this no, watch. If we could zoom in. No. Yeah. Go for zoom. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Uh, is there any further? Yeah. Yeah, from here it looks like hemichorallium. That's good. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. What depth? We're at 2338. Yeah. I think that's the first one. Yeah. Unless they saw any over dinner early. Bridge, no? Add another five zero meters uh, north. Do you know what causes these cracks, Nick, in the in the flows? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, generally speaking, uh, cracks will uh, initiate in between um, mineral grain boundaries. Mm. Uh, so the minerals are constantly undergoing what we call partial melting. Uh, so you kind of have like this crystal slush mixed with liquid uh, magma. Um, and as it cools, you have these cracks that propagate um, along these grain boundaries, and with enough uh, stress, they just tend to open up and, and propagate even further hmm. along those uh, grain boundary weaknesses. Did you practice that answer? <laughs> <laughs> that was very straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's very good at it. He is. Truly is. <laughs> Because usually on my watch, I just ask that question into the ether, and none of us have any <laughs> idea what the answer is. We're like, wouldn't Silence. it be cool if somebody studied that? There have been plenty of questions <laughs> that I've been stumped on, and yeah, you can't I wish I could revise my answer, Christ too. You do a good job yeah, of hiding it. Thank you. Yeah, Aritagorgia, small one. Have we been seeing a lot of Chrysogorgias? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Vermilla Gorgia. Yeah, forever. those. They're everywhere, which is <laughs> interesting because she thinks they're everywhere too. That they are everywhere. Go wide. The Ramla Gorgia, like, they usually are on on, at least where I've seen them on these like rocky overhangs and rock walls. They seem to be concentrated there, so it's kind of interesting that these are, on a slopey seafloor, the dominant Chrysogorgid. I think we've been seeing a little bit more biodiversity in general. Yeah, uh, yeah we came sure. around Steve was Go mentioning this uh, waypoint. Oh, yeah. Cup coral. And, and a uh, cucumber. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And a shrimp. And a shrimp. Look at that. And is that a and little a sea star? Yeah, yeah, a little oh. ravioli. A little baby ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see the ravioli? To the uh, left, to under the, the lasers yeah. right now, kind of. Yeah, underneath all the We're calling it a ravioli there. Oh, that's not a coral base? What? Oh, I, it I, might think be I see a coral stock base, base or special. something, yeah. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Go for zoom. <laughs> oh, not, not that one. The one lower yeah. than that. That's a really yeah. weird elongated sea cucumber. It looks like gravity is yeah. pulling. It's like, you know, <laughs> really it needs to expel. It's a bit constipated right now. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, blocked up. Let's get out of here before that happens. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of cool to see. Uh, not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> <laughs> For science, Logan. Yeah, it's true, here. it's true for science. For science. Right, I'll make that sacrifice. Um, okay, so now that Steve's out of the van, we have this discussion at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bronwyn can also confirm that she has not written down that species. <laughs> From Lagorgia, Militaris. <laughs> Steve's finally it's, lost it. It's everywhere. What? No? Everywhere. Hello. Steve says that we've seen it on a, a ton okay, of our dives, on. and none of us have any recollection of seeing it. And Bronwyn says she hasn't written it. Down. I haven't seen it on a lot of dives. We've seen like on cliffy faces, looking through like the timeline pictures of the whole dives, writing the dive reports. It seems like when we come to like rock walls and cliffy faces, we've seen it a few times, but not like this. I mean, yes, there's a lot of it here, but when yeah. we first saw it, Steve was like, "Yeah, we see this one all the time." And really, <laughs> it's like amnesia. It's coral amnesia. Yeah, I, mis I misidentified it, and he's like, it's the most common coral we've seen. And I was like, oh. That's never no, said that not the <laughs> most common. Is that what he said? Something like that, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
it's about okay. that time of the expedition. Okay, just, they they did have a long handover, so maybe Steve told Lila to continue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Bronwyn, thank you for I'm setting the records straight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so our viewers online have totally noticed that we're seeing a lot of dead uh, sponges yeah. in this area. And is it concerning that we're seeing so many? Um, I would say no. It, I think it's pretty common to see scatterings of dead sponges, um, and it takes a really long time for them to degrade. Um, yeah. Yeah, there it takes, I mean, so sponges can live for a really that? long time, but it takes- Go for Zoom longer for the, like the it's bases and bodies to degrade. Oh, is that a sea pen? pen? Or is it a, is it a Christ? No, it's not a Christ squid Push because in it's in sand. Uh, <laughs> it looks like a sea pen. Hmm. Yeah. Um, have we been seeing any sea pens? Not no. one. Can it's we hold rocky. the ship? Is it on a... Is it too late for that? What's up? For holding the ship for a sample? Or is it not even yeah. a good spot, potentially? Let's get it. Uh, we can do it. Go wide. Bridge, no? We can do it quick. Oh, yeah. Uh, snip and slur? Uh, hope Yeah, position. or uh, oof, it's so hard to know if it's going to just retract into the sand okay. or not. Well, we're going to we'll sure. snip, and if we have sure. to, we'll pick up and move. Yeah. It's best to get as much of it as possible. Okay. So maybe even if it's like in the claw part that isn't the snip, if there's a way to grab it and have more of a hank okay. hope of yanking it out. We'll see what we can do. Okay, cool. happy? Take the bubble. Take the bubble. Okay, craft valve coming on. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it. Thanks. Okay, I'm coming live. And if I can take images, if that helps you. Turn your me. jaws around in case oh, you end up you got it? Right, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Pilot challenge Are there any level 10. <laughs> collected yet on this dive? No. No, and we, we like intentionally tried to pick sandy tracks to find sea pens and didn't see them, and here here is one, so. There's one baby patch of sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like those huge sandy I, patches. I think I'm a little in. bit too close. Is there any okay. way you just like change your heading a little bit? And, like push me away? Or as Gabby would say, a wee patch of sand. A wee patch of sand. <laughs> be like trying to pluck a flower. Like I know. A little. Yeah, I know. It's a rough spot. Like a chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> so can't get in there. Very nice. Thanks. Nice. Okay. Nice. Nice back. Oh, I lost it. I just, I can't get close enough to get uh, the little grippy rubber bits on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, just because it's tucked into the rock. Yeah. That looks like it could be a good grab. Mm -hmm. Huh? Nothing. No. Nothing yeah. doing. It's still it's there. It's just retracting. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. I think we should push on. Okay. Thanks for the try. Yep. Of course. Sorry about that. Well, it's okay. It's a, it was a hard spot, and yep. they pull and all the way uh, back in. Why don't you come up so with the... Uh, that was probably a product of maybe a sea pen. And the ship stopped, so. Yeah. 
If you're happy, I'll put in a move now and let you get ahead. Fleshy. Stand by one. Roger. Coming up. Standing by. And that's the craft valve off. Great, thank you. Oh, while we're here, science, is there anything else you want to do here? Any ROCKs? Okay, um, any what? R-O-C-K's. <laughs> R-O-C-K's. It's yeah, been, how are you uh, feeling, R-O-C-K, no, man? No, no, I don't, I don't like the drugs too much. <laughs> what is this in I front of this black this coral? Before. Wow. Yeah, can we look at yeah, that? That's yeah, gorgeous. we definitely can. That is mm -hmm. so long and unbranching. That's beautiful. It's like a feather. Wow. If we could get, yeah, good close images of it. Oh man, I'm like, I don't know if this has been, I don't recognize this, but doesn't mean it hasn't been collected before. Is Steve down there watching at dinner? I, that's what I'm, I'm wishing he was. I'm Do you have the science chat open? Uh, I can call the lounge. Yeah, I'd that's as much zoom as I've got right there. now too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. That black coral. Oh wait. Okay, go for Zoom. Oh, it's got some associates. Are we healthier too. right now, Samantha? Yeah, we're holding position. Okay. This is very unique. Beautiful shot. Okay, go wide again. I can set up to get like some polyp shots, I guess. Yeah, that would be great. Shrimp. 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 <laughs> Is the chat open? Yeah. That one that looks. It's three thirty. Nope, that's not now. Yeah, I was just gonna see if that. Okay, yeah. go for zoom. Oh, maybe. Look. Yeah. Ooh, wow. But that's usually one, like a lot smaller. I want to say. Is that Are what you're getting? Good for? shots of this. Mm -hmm. Do you need the base or anything like that? Um. No. It's yeah. It's too. Bi it's it's big. Let's just take a snip off the end. Okay. Good. While we're here. Sounds good. It's at a snip and slurp. It's quite deep. Um. It's kind of rigid and sticky. Oh, but we can't put things in the front yeah, as well right now. And this one's probably going to be neutrally buoyant, hey? Uh, the black corals are actually usually okay. Um, they sink pretty good. But yeah, sure, we can, it's probably narrow enough that it'll not, it's not branchy, so it'll probably slurp up. So we can snip and slurp. Okay. Craft of coming on. Maybe it's parantopathies. Again, the other way with your jaws. Okay. Nice. There. So maybe a cut around here or so. Or um, like, is that enough or too much? Sorry, I missed the. Would you mind lifting real quick oh, yeah. to see how much that is? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you've gotten a, such nice. a nice good spot. Um, I'm trying to gauge. We need, I don't know, like 15 to 20 centimeters would be nice, so maybe a little further down. Okay. Somewhere like there would be good, yeah, because I also okay. guess we don't want it to get stuck in the slurp. Are we doing a, are we doing a slurp? Uh, yes, we'll snip it and then feed it into the slurp. What's our slurp number? Five, six, or seven. Half me to go.
Wait, what? What was I that? Think, I think Karen was asking. Oh, oh yeah, oh. sure. Oh, wait, sorry. Sorry. Nice. Oh, I didn't see the squat lobster on it. Um, but yeah, okay, let's first slurp this, and then I guess I missed the squat lobster, but Paula saw a squat, and if it would be possible to slurp that okay. into the same jar after, that would be great. You're at 50%. Thank you. Nicely done. Thanks. Beauty. Feel wow. free to bump it higher. It shouldn't uh, damage the sample. Stretch it out to get it through that elbow there. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do that first and then go for this squat. There it is. Oh, nice. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Really nice. Okay. And then That's go zero. back in and see the squat. I you guess. want the squat lobster in Where the same is jar? That, yeah, same jar would be great. Oh, that's, that's uh, maybe. I didn't notice it when we zoomed, but Paula did. So okay. uh, that uh, looks yeah, like the closest zoom. thing to squat-y. Yeah, it's that on a, the far side, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Is it even a squat lobster? I don't know that it is even a lobster. Did huh. you notice anything, Steve? Um, no. I don't. I don't think it is. That that spot is a squat lobster. Yeah, it Was looks it near like the a, base? a branching, a like pineal branch site. Unless it's farther down. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Could, could we look if it was further down? <coughs> No, it looks like there's a lot of the. Yeah. No, I think it might have been a false alarm. Or or it bailed. Also possible. So that is great. Thank you so much for that snip and slurp. Of course. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, that was a beautiful. Did you just said. Somebody wants to know about the different colors of coral. Why are they different colors? Uh, Nav, right. did you get a waypoint for that? Uh, I did, yeah. It's uh, Okay, just right checking. Here. My best guess is because there are different types of coral. I don't know necessarily if genetic differences have much to do with the, color, the colors being different. Uh, but Steve is coming on. I'll ask him in just a moment. But that's my best guess. Definitely seeing more alive things as we're getting closer to the top. So we're just about two hours into our watch. This is the four to eight crew. If you have any questions or comments about anything that we're seeing, please feel free to go ahead and write those in the chat box below the video stream. Our current depth is 2,307 meters and the temperature is 1.9 degrees Celsius. If you'd like to see that information for yourself, um, you can access that if you go to the nautiluslive.org homepage. On the right hand side there is a strip where it gives more information and then at the bottom of that it says more data. If you click on that more data button it should take you to a different screen where you can see all kinds of stuff.
Bridge, no? Uh, five zero meters north. Now, when you get a chance, can you uh, scroll us up on high pack? Sorry, Sans, can you repeat? Scroll us up on high pack, please. High pack, Frederick. Right Steve, in your experience, um, different colored corals, are they just a different type of coral or is it genetic variation? Um, it's unclear. Oh, uh, do we have a minute? Can we pause? Uh, uh, yeah, stop. can you... Uh, there's just something back here I wanted to zoom on. In this direction. Okay. Yeah, oh, just, sorry. Just, just off screen. I was just getting the maintenance plan for tonight. All right, so... We look here. Okay, go for zoom. Oh wow, how did you see that little like fluff uh, ball? No, no, down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the, the bifurcating branch okay. coral uh, down below. Right here. Oh, oh, you oh, want the the, the branching ball. coral? Okay, yeah. not the puff ball. Roger. I'm used to you liking the little puff balls. I wanted to get a better look at this because this actually resembles the, the Norilla new species that we sampled last year. It has one low branch, like a bifurcating branch. And like um, a little urchin though. If it's possible, a snip of this. I know it's a lot of yeah. sampling, but I just got okay. back. So I'm feeling punchy. Oh, th the, <laughs> more, the more sampling, the better. Okay. So this is likely a new species um, that we collected for the first time last year, but when we're describing new species, we often want to have um, you know, multiple vouchers. So, 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 blah. so it shows it's not a fluke uh, and that there's something real there. And so this uh, specimen is almost identical to the Norella species we sampled last year from NA 141. So but a very small it, clip right? of this would be really oh, useful it is, you want to, okay, to uh, help Bridge, finish describing that species. Whole position. Sorry about that. Sorry, I thought I heard we don't need a sample. Yeah, it was, it, yeah. I was ready to go, and then we discovered this, which is going to be probably a snip and slurp, Steve? Yeah. Into jar six. Jar six, roger. Cool. So Steve, were you just talking about this coral, or the coral that we just sampled previously? The This one right here this that's one. on the screen now, yeah. That's a bifurcating Norella colony, usually only two branches. Or one branch, I guess. And the coral we just snipped Gosh, previously, what, uh, what are you thinking about that one? Uh, the black coral? Yep. Um, so we, we think it's a, a parentopathies black coral, uh, but that's about as far as we get. It's very cool. difficult to go I further beyond that. I do not have my that. hand on the craft help right now. No worries. I have my mouse okay, I cursor see that. hovering. Um, One of the two branches is, is perfect, um, if you can get one of them. Okay. Leaves half the colony there. Data, when I um, ran the flush jar just now, something small and white went in there. Okay. Bonus sample. I think that was uh, maybe the cup coral. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Looking forward to that. So just like this? Yeah, one of those branches is perfect. Just one of them? Okay. If we can. Um, uh, Sorry, I got I you don't in know quite if I can, close. I don't know if I can get just one. Um, all um. right, whatever you can get. As long as we leave some behind, I suppose. Okay. 